this should be the last video in our series here on map and compasses. Again, we're not trying to teach you how to use a map and compass. We're just giving you some ideas of the resources and the things that we've come up with over the years. Um, so this one is about the resources available. And orienteering, map and compass reading is a perishable skill just like any others. I find that every time I go out, I have to think twice about what's going on with my uh, GPS unit. For that reason, um, whatever I might be carrying, usually not on my person, but in my pack, I'll carry the uh, instruction manual for my GPS. Um, it's really easy to assume that you know everything about it, but out in the middle of a mountain, you know, in a rainstorm, and you need, really need to figure out how to get the weather channel to work, that's not the time to figure out you don't know how to do it. So I don't mind keeping that extra couple ounces with a uh, manual along with me. Um, some other resources though, there's lots of them out there. I'm going to start out with uh, the ones where I started learning about Map and Compass, which was in the Scouts in order to get your Orienteering Merit Badge, um, which is just a patch to symbolize that you've learned the skill set required to use a Map and Compass. Um, you've got an Orienteering Merit Badge book, and this isn't necessarily a cheat sheet for the test, but it's a study guide for the test. And in that respect, it's got a lot of information packed into a couple of pages. It's only what 32 pages all together and it's you know it's meant for kids so it's not in uh, language it's hard to understand and it really gets the message across how to use that compass in relation to your map just like on the picture there you know these map these compasses this style compass is made to help you orienteer with a topographic map and that's really what these do now I don't think that they use merit badge books anymore and uh, I've had these since I was a kid and you can tell they do hold up well. I've definitely had them out with me on numerous trips. Granted, I don't open them up and use them very often because it is basic info and I pretty much know all that now. But if I bring somebody with me who's not familiar with it, you know, it's nice to give them something that, you know, you're not trying to teach someone necessarily. You're letting a book teach them that's, you know, been designed to teach. Uh, it gives them something to read at night. And, uh, you know, if they're interested in it, it does get a lot of information across fairly quickly. Because they're not made anymore, I suspect these might be pretty cheap. Uh, back when they were still being used, they were only a buck or two, so I can't imagine they cost very much. Along the same lines, the Scout Field Book, which is basically the handbook that you have as a scout, uh, teaches you a lot of information, and, and uh, orienteering is in here. And this one is the SAS Survival Man Handbook. Um, a lot of good stuff about this one, a lot of negative stuff about this one. You know, it's... Um, it's not the only resource out there there's it's not just about orienteering but it does give you a lot of information again about um, signaling and you know how to, what kind of paths to take uh, things that you may not get from a, a book that's not t thinking about saving your life a book that's just giving you the basic facts about orienteering may not think about um, what side of the slope to walk on and, and that kind of thing so anyway um, there's these resources out there they might seem a little bit too military for you but even if you're totally anti-military or anti-survival for some reason um, it's worth checking these out because again they're going to have some basic down and dirty orienteering skills and they're also going to give you some information about the skills you're going to need when you're out there with a map and compass very rarely are we out there with a map and compass where we're not in a situation that could be dangerous uh, you know you could fall off a rock you could twist an ankle miles back into the out you know into the into the wilderness so uh, good kind of skills to have and great books to own really they're you know something that if you read them uh, you've got the information in your brain at least you're aware of it at that point um, sort of along the same lines we're back to military manuals these are literally military manuals this one is a correspondence course on map reading and it's literally just about reading the map and it goes into probably more detail than you'd really want the reason I bought this well, one, it was super cheap, but it's also complete. In the back, you've got your your map uh, protractor, or whatever you want to call it, your graphic training aid, and then you've got your uh, map to, to work with. And it's got tests, so you can test yourself and find out if you're really doing well or not. Uh, correspondence classes, if you haven't done a military correspondence class, they're great. You really do learn a lot in them. Uh, this one is the manual from an actual course, an actual class. And again, this one is a military manual, so it's written at a, probably a sixth grade level, maybe a little bit more. Not a super technical thing, though. It's designed to get guys who don't know about the topic to know about it. 
Um, so it's written at a beginner's level. Uh, lots of information. This one, well, I don't know exactly how many pages thick, but it's not a small manual. Uh, it's worth keeping. It's a little bigger than you'd want to walk with, but um, you know, I could think of worse ways to, to take some weight along with you. Oh, the other reason I mention these is they're very cheap. Uh, I bought all three of these military manuals along with a stack. Oh, I don't know. This was only a couple of them. I probably got a dozen manuals and uh, five or six bucks. Really wasn't expensive at all. Somebody was either clearing out their kid's basement or just didn't need the manuals anymore. Sold them really cheap. So keep an eye out at used bookstores and flea markets and online and things like that. Um, you can get these kind of resources fairly cheap. Now, not as much orienteering knowledge, but um, when I'm going out and I'm going to decide to take a hike or if I'm going geocaching or hunting or whatever I happen to be doing, because things change, I like to think about where I'm going. So I might open up a map of the area and decide that, okay, in this area where I'm hunting, if something happens and I change my mind, um, for example, this area down south, right on the border with Mexico, We've hunted here plenty of times. There's antelope and stuff in this private section of land here. It's real hilly and grassy. You get over towards here and it turns into mountains. And there's a mining town here that's really neat to look at. It's an old mining town. And 10 years ago, you could just drive right in and walk around in it. It was really neat. Um, down here on the border, there's an abandoned border town. Uh, there's ghost towns and mining towns all in the area here around southern Arizona. Not to mention lots of wilderness. So there's things that I'm interested in, medicinal plants, wild food, mushrooms. I'll take a look at what time of year it is, what sort of environment I'm walking into, uh, if it's going to be trees, if it's going to be pine trees, if it's going to be desert. And I, you know, I'll do a little bit of research and I'll see what, what kind of plants might be, what, what I might encounter on the trip. Um, if I'm going to go into an area, some other books I like to look at or to use as resources are this one, which is Gem Trails of Arizona. This one's Hiking Southern Arizona. These are both about hiking trails. This one in particular takes you to places that are, you know, old, either old mining towns or old mines themselves. And they'll tell you, you know, dig down. You might find some, um, I don't know, let's find something here. You might find some jasper if you go along this creek. Um, so that kind of stuff is interesting to know. So if you're going into an area, having resources like this that tell you about it, this one will tell you where some nice hikes are, how long the hikes are, um, what kind of difficulty, what you might see along the way. Usually they're hikes of interest, so they're going to take you to a nice view. They're going to take you to some you know, natural outcropping of rocks. Who knows? Uh, and then this one is Roadside Geology of Arizona. Um, another neat one, uh, let's say you're going to be driving down this section of Route 40. Um, it tells you that there's lava flows here, that there was a cinder cone here, that this is some limestone. And along with this gem trail book, you know, a lot of times I'll figure that if I'm driving between here and Vegas, uh, which is about six hours or so, I might want to stop about halfway and find a mine or something. And I've done that almost every trip up there. So these kind of resources, you know, if you're not into rocks and hiking, great. You know, find a fishing hole that's in between where you're going. Find a uh, place to take pictures of the vegetation. You know, whatever you might be into. Find covered bridges. Who knows what you like. Um, but there's lots of guides like this out there. By the way, um, every one of these I buy at the, lo at the local used bookstore. So this one with a cover price of 10 bucks, 5 bucks. This one with a cover price of 12 bucks, 6 bucks. So you basically don't need to spend anywhere near 4 bucks. You don't need to spend a lot of money on these books. Of course, you can buy them online at Amazon or whatever, um, but I'm not here to sell books. I'm just here to let you know there's lots of resources out there for orienteering. Um, find one that you like, um, and then keep reading about it. There's lots of stuff out there, and uh, you know, have fun while you're out there, and be prepared when you're out when you're going out there.